I want to give you a quick hardware overview of the Temp Defender G2. This is a standard one rack unit, 19 inch or 23 inch rack mount device. And I'll walk you through the ports and we'll talk about what they all do. So if we start here on the front panel, you can see the name, Temp Defender G2 there. Uh, you have a USB craft port and that's to log in and do initial unit configuration. You don't really need to use that because you can just use the default IP and get to the web interface and then change the IP to whatever you want. But that's available and there's some good debug in there, a lot of handy tools in a text interface that you access with the USB. Then you've got a variety of different LEDs to tell you about the system status and these can help for diagnosing setup issues or if you're on the phone with tech support it can be good and the user manual has a big table that explains what each blink pattern and color on these LEDs mean. You have an acknowledge button. This would be if you have an active alarm out at the site and you want to tell everybody else on your team that you're working on it. You can just push acknowledge and that will silence any um, alarm sounds that are coming out of the speaker here. And you can see you have this speaker and there's a volume knob. You can adjust how loud it is. Some of the original models didn't have this and some wily technicians would poke the, through the metal with a needle or other uh, sharp object and puncture the speaker and we don't want that. So we give you the ability to customize the volume to your liking. And then we'll also put on all of our units a part number but also a board ID. And if you've got any trouble, this will help us trace exactly what build options you ordered and just if there was anything that you saw that uh, you had a question about, you give us that board number when you call in and we'll know exactly what's on this particular build. So then if we go to the back, you can see we start off with power inputs. This is a negative 48 volt model with a single input. Some will have dual. And you can see we can put a variety of connectors on this device. And so uh, NEG48 with this particular connector is here, but we can do Wago and locking type connectors. So that's why the metal has extra cutout. And you can see that it accepts a pretty wide range of voltage around negative 48. So we always want our equipment to be last to fail. So if you were to have a voltage situation at a site, we want our unit to keep trucking along. So it can tolerate a pretty wide voltage centered around negative 48. You have a GMT fuse, half an amp here just to protect the device, and you can see a power and a fuse alarm light. This will let you know if you've done things like wired your power backwards. Then we have the alarms. You have eight alarm inputs on this device, and these connectors just click. So you stick your wire in the bottom and then you flip the gate down. A little hard to see. I'll try and turn that. Oh, it's pretty dark. Let's see. There we go. Get a little closer and get some shine on it. Uh, so there's these levers across the top. You just stick your wire in the bottom, and once you got it stuck in, you just flip the gate closed with your finger, and they're pretty easy to operate. Then, so after your eight alarm inputs, you have six analogs, and analogs are useful for any kind of voltage or current. You can do negative 90 to positive 90 volts, so if you want to do a battery string voltage, anything like that, it'll work. Zero to five volts, obviously, will also work. It's the sensor standard. And then if you want to, you can go to four to 20 milliamp operation for other sensors, and you can do that on a one-to-one -one basis. You just undo this one screw, and then stick your screwdriver in the slot and rotate this around. It's attached right here, and then that will expose six dip switches and then you can toggle each one if you want to go to current mode just be sure that you know what you're doing because you can burn out the resistor there if you've got it set up for current and you're still feeding in voltage so just be cautious but it's a nice feature to be able to toggle those analogs back and forth then this temp defender has three relays these are the opposite of a discrete input these are discrete output contact closure relays so you can control a generator or backup system if it's anything that you could flip a switch or push a button, you can wire it into these ports and you'll gain remote control, either automatically by setting it up in the web interface or you can just log in manually and tell it latch relay three and it'll do whatever you have it wired to do. There's a internal temp sensor here. This is just ambient, kind of a basic temperature monitor right in the unit. And it may not be totally accurate if you have another piece of equipment that you wanna monitor. So that's where these digital sensor ports come in. This is a, our D-wire interface and you would connect up to 16 D-wire sensors to a single one of these ports and just daisy chain one to the next. But then, you because you have four ports on this model, most RTs just have one, but this one has four, you can actually do up to 32 total and you can have different strings going in different directions. And because they're bus powered, you can go about 600 feet. But if you really had to go a long ways in one direction and a long ways in another direction, it's better just to have a couple of different strings all starting from these ports. So giving you those four ports gives you some flexibility. You have an RS-232 serial port. This is to access a legacy serial device if you want to be able to get to it remotely and you don't want to have to drive out to your site and 
throw a laptop in the truck that actually has a serial port and connect to it in the traditional way, this is a way to reach out to serial devices remotely over the network. Because as you can see here, this is a 10100 port. So this device is on the network. It has a web interface. You can send SNMP traps. You can send email. So it's a fully network capable device. And it's got some features that let you tie into legacy devices like serial there. Uh, you can see the Rojas indication too. So this is Rojas 5 of 6, meaning there are hazardous substances not used in these parts. The only thing that's, that is here, the 5 of 6 exemption, there is lead in the solder. So if you have a rule that says you have to be Rojas 5 of 6 compliant, this temp defender will do it. So as you can see, this is a good little rack mount unit, 1RU, nice standard. It's good for small or maybe medium sites where you don't have too many inputs, but you definitely want some kind of an RTU out there. So if you want any more information about the temp defender or there are really about 50 different models of RTUs from DPS. Go ahead and get on the website, www.dpstele.com, or call 1-800-693-0351.